Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining our lunchtime webinar. Um, I'm Erin Savage. I am a senior program manager at Appalachian Voices, and I work on our coal impacts team. Today's webinar is going to go over coal mine reclamation and uh, give you an overview of some of the issues we're currently facing with reclamation and uh, what tools we have to address reclamation and how you can help support reclamation as an investment in coal impacted communities. Uh, we will be able to answer questions. Go ahead and type questions into the Q&A box um, and I will probably get to those at the end. The presentation isn't too, too long, so we should be able to have some discussion in probably 20 minutes or less. And we'll also give you some links um, for you to take action. All right, so basically we are working on two broad categories of coal mine reclamation in, across the country. Um, the two categories are abandoned mine lands and what we're calling modern era mines. Um, so modern era mines, hang on, I just need to double check. I think I went one slide too far. Hang on, yep, all right, sorry about that. Um, so starting with abandoned mine lands, abandoned mine lands is a specific federal designation um, and abandoned mine lands are any mines that were abandoned prior to the passage of the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act in 1977. Um, the act, we call it SMACRA for short, um, and it basically regulates coal mining across the country now, um, but it didn't apply to mines prior to 1977. So one of the things that SMACRA has done to deal with the mines that were, um, that need cleanup prior to 1977 was that it created the AML fund. Um, and the AML fund has been around for nearly 50 years and it is funded through a tax on current coal production. And then that money is distributed to state mining agencies so that those agencies can go and clean up these pre-1977 mines. Um, this fund needs to be reauthorized by Congress roughly every 15 years. It's up for reauthorization uh, in September of this year. So we've been working over the last few years to make sure that Congress reauthorizes the fund. And we've also been trying to make improvements to the fund because there is still a lot of outstanding AML left to clean up. Um, the fund has never really had enough money in it to do all of the reclamation. So the next category is modern era mines. And basically, those mines are any mines that received their mining permit under SMACRA. So any mines that started after 1977. And through SMACRA, these mines have certain requirements that the pre-77 mines didn't have. Coal companies are required to reclaim these mines. And they're also required to put up bonds to guarantee that money will be available for reclamation. That way, if the coal company goes bankrupt or otherwise doesn't complete the reclamation, there is money available to state and federal regulators to make sure the reclamation gets done. So the system in theory is a good one, but over the last five to 10 years, we've seen some problems that are really uh, coming to a head at this point. Basically, a lot of states don't have sufficient bonds in place to guarantee reclamation. Either states have calculated bonding rates too low, um, or they've used what uh, are called pool bonds, where basically multiple companies pay into a state pool, and the pool is not really set up to cover every single permit in, that takes place in the pool. Um, and most recently, because of accelerating bankruptcies, we're seeing some of the third party insurance companies, they're called surety companies, um, that provide the bonds. We're seeing them uh, at risk of not being able to pay out on the bonds that they've provided to the coal companies. Um, so it's getting to a point where it may be too late to make any more improvements to state bonding systems. So we need to figure out how we're gonna make up a shortfall in funding for this new wave of essentially abandoned mine lands.
And this is just an infographic that I uh, put together. We did a webinar in July, um, which I think we have available on our, our website and Facebook, that is about a, a big study that my team did regarding outstanding reclamation just in the eastern states. Uh, so we did seven eastern states, uh, including the central Appalachian states. And we were looking at the amount of outstanding reclamation at these modern era mines, the cost, the likely cost to do the reclamation, and the total available bonds. So this infographic basically shows um, blue circles are the estimated remaining cost, and the red circles are the available bonds. So you can see that none of the states have enough bond money to cover total, the total reclamation costs. An important point here, though, is that all of the mines that were in this study are currently held by coal companies. So under the law, the coal companies should be doing the reclamation at these mines. Uh, and, and some of them will do more of this reclamation. So we don't yet know how much of the reclamation will end up falling to state agencies. It depends how many more coal companies go bankrupt, how quickly they go bankrupt, how much reclamation they get done before they go bankrupt, and whether they're able to uh, transfer or sell their permits during bankruptcy to some other company uh, that may be better able to do the reclamation. So there's a lot of unknowns in the total uh, shortfall for the modern era mines at this point. Here's what we do know about both outstanding AML needs and outstanding modern era mine needs. Um, for Pre-1977 abandoned mines, the federal government maintains an inventory of AML sites, and that is usually relying upon data collected by state mining agencies. Um, so according to the federal inventory, there's about 384,000 acres across the country in need of reclamation, um, and that doesn't include some other uh, types of reclamation needs like water treatment or streams that need repairing. Um, so the other way to measure it is how much money do we think it's going to cost? Mm -hmm. The inventory currently includes about 11 to $12 billion worth of reclamation, but there has been some recent independent analysis to update that cost based on um, identifying new sites and inflation, increasing construction costs. Uh, sites that deteriorate further while they're not being reclaimed. So the likely outstanding cost is uh, closer to $20 billion. For modern era mines, I um, completed the study I told you about and we estimated acreage for the eastern states and that total number came out to about 600,000 acres. There's another organization called uh, Western Organization of Resource Councils that did a similar study a couple of years ago uh, covering most of the western states and they found a, an additional I think about 250,000 acres. So total across the country we're looking at a minimum of, of nearly 900,000 acres that need reclamation at current coal mines. Um, I the, Between the two studies that doesn't cover the Illinois Basin mines and some I think Alaskan mines, um, so there that number is actually likely to increase. Um, we don't know the total cost because there's no um, unified effort by the Federal Office of Surface Mining or anyone else to get a good estimate of that cost. Um, for my report, we did estimate costs at the eastern states to the best of our ability based on knowledge uh, of major reclamation costs at, at individual mines. And we estimated that just the seven eastern states would cost between seven and nine billion for reclamation of all modern era mines. So the total cost across the country is likely to be, off the top of my head, likely to dub be double that. Um, so approaching a similar amount to what we need for outstanding AML reclamation. All right, so um, some of you may know we do have some bills in the works. The specific bill I want to talk about today is AML reauthorization. Um, that bill would um, reauthorize the AML program for an additional 15 years. It would reauthorize collection of the fee on coal mining that currently provides money for the fund. 
Um, and the version that is in the Senate infrastructure bill includes an influx of over $11 billion into the AML fund. So still not quite enough if the actual outstanding cost is closer to 20 billion, but $11 billion is a huge influx of money into the fund. Um, it's really about the same amount the fund has collected over the last 40 to 50 years. So it's a huge win. Um, we really, really want to see this pass through the House as well and become law so that we have the money needed for AML and so that the program can continue for the next 15 years. Um, <clears throat> There is currently no bill to address modern era mine reclamation. Um, Appalachian Voices and some of our partner groups have suggestions of what such a bill could look like. Um, you know, we know uh, some of the shortfalls and some of the enforcement issues. Uh, we do think at this point that there needs to be federal money to make up shortfalls in state bonding programs to ensure that these modern era mines are reclaimed. We do feel strongly, however, that any money um, that came from the federal government shouldn't be used as a coal bailout, coal company bailout. Um, we, you know, we would want it to go through some sort of federal and state program. Um, and we really see this as uh, addressing impacts on community members that live near these mines. Because if these mines are, are left abandoned with no cleanup fund, it's really the people who live nearby who suffer the consequences through water pollution, landslides, damage to infrastructure like roads and power lines, and even damage to private property such as houses. I'm just trying to get my slides to go, but they don't want to. <laughs> There we go. All right. So lastly, what can you do? Well, since we have AML reauthorization in the Senate infrastructure bill, you can tell the House to pass the infrastructure bill. Um, we've got the link here. I think Molly will be able to drop that in the chat if you can't take note of it. Um, and then the other thing that we are uh, would like you to take action on is talk is send an, an email to the coal communities working group and actually my slide trouble slip skipped over a slide on what that commu coal communities working group is so i'll just tell you about it um, essentially the white house has put together an interagency working group that consists of a lot of top officials from many of the federal agencies, and they are tasked with identifying ways to help coal communities deal with transition away from coal. So that includes communities where there was a lot of coal mining. Um, it also includes communities that have relied on power plant employment, coal power plant employment. Um, so as the coal industry declines and as some of these power plants shut down, um, this interagency working group wants to identify how they how they can help. Um, and one way we think they can help is by listening directly to coal impacted residents. Um, the coal communities working group has talked about having community meetings and town halls. Um, there have been a few scheduled specific to some funding opportunities, but no kind of more general um, comment opportunities yet. Um, I think COVID is complicating that again. Uh, so instead, we have a general contact for the group and we would like to solicit comments from all of you and send those into the working group um, so that the working group is well aware of issues with current um, mine reclamation and ways in which the Federal Office of Surface Mining Reclamation and Enforcement can address these reclamation issues. Um, so take a look at that action. Feel free to edit it if you live near a coal mine. You know, talk about the impacts from that mine. Talk about the impacts from bankruptcies that may be happening near you. Um, and let this working group know what you would like to see happen in your community. All right, so with that, I'm going to um, turn it over to questions and I'll check our Q&A. All right, just 
check in this first question um, from Mike. It says, is Appalachian Voices aware of any difficulties that coal communities have had in applying for or even learning about funding available through the federal economic development authorities? $300 million coal communities commitment program designed to support communities where the coal industry has declined through support of abandoned myland cleanup or other economic development programs. So what Mike is getting at is the current coal communities working group workshops are mo mostly focused on the EDA, Economic Development Authority grants that are available right now. Um, we are not aware of any specific difficulties. Um, we have been working mostly in the states where we're present, so mostly Virginia, but also West Virginia, um, to uh, attend those technical meetings about applying for grants and talking with partners we know of who may have suitable projects. Um, this first round of EDA grants, I think, is um, an initial kind of project proposal. So I think there's several rounds of opportunities to get in for funding. Um, if there are folks on the on the webinar who are interested in EDA grants and have projects or know organizations that could be nonprofits, government organizations. Um, that would like to apply, feel free to reach out to us and we can help you navigate that process. All right, that's the only question so far. I don't know, um, Molly may be checking Facebook could let me know if we've got any, any Facebook questions. All right, I don't think we have any other questions, um, but feel free to email me for any follow-up or if you weren't able to get those links to take action, um, you can reach me at erin at atvoices.org. So that's E-R-I-N at atvoices.org. Uh, and I, let's see. Let's see if I can type this into the chat for everybody, hold on. All right, there's my email. Well, thanks all for joining. We really appreciate it. And if you have a moment, make sure um, to check those actions. Have a good day.